In the recursive solution we've seen in part one and in the iterative solution that we've seen in part two, we assume that the two nodes we were given were not null and that they were actually in the tree. So we didn't have to worry about root being null or that if we move to the left or to the right, current would become null. Let's consider the case where we cannot make that assumption. So any of the two nodes can be null or not in the tree. So this also means that root can be null, indicating an empty tree. These cases can easily be handled by writing a function that thus checks for null and for nodes that are not in the tree, and only then calls either solution 1 or solution 2 and returns whatever the result is. Let's try this wrapper function. We'll call it LCA and it takes root n1 and n2 and it returns the lowest common ancestor. The first thing we want to do is check if n1 or n2 is null. In that case, we just return null. If n1 and n2 are not null, then we need to make sure that they are both in the tree. We will do this by trying to find a node with the same value as n1 in the tree and make sure that that is equal to n1. And then we try to find the node with the same value as n2 and make sure that that node is actually n2. So let's do this. So we will call n1 found the node that we find in the tree that has the same value as n1. So we'll call a function called find node in binary search tree, which takes the rest of the root node of the binary search tree and the value that we need to find. We pass in the value of n1. Now this will return null if there is no such value, or it will return the node that had that value. We need to make sure that this node is the same as n1. So if n1 found it's different from n1, then we return null. So if we either don't find a node with that value, so the return would be null, or we find it but it's some other node, then we want to return null. Note that this automatically handles the case when root is null, because if root is null, we have an empty tree, so we would get null, and null would not be equal to n1. So we would just return null. Let's do the same thing for n2. Once we made sure that both n1 and n2 are in the tree, we can proceed to call the recursive solution we've seen in part 1 or the iterative solution we've seen in part 2 and return whatever it returns. Let's in this case call the solution that we've seen in part 2, which is the iterative one. This, of course, could be LCA solution one, which is the recursive one. And that's the whole function. You can find the link to the code for find node in BST as well as the link to the video which explains that code in the description below. Let's analyze the time complexity of this function. In this case, it will depend on the time complexity of find node in BST and the complexity of LCA solution 1 or solution 2, whichever one we picked. In both of those cases, the time complexity is O of h, where h is the height of the tree. So the time complexity of this function is also O of h. Let's analyze the space complexity. In this case, it will depend on how much space we're using in fine node in BST and in LCA solution 1 or solution 2, whichever one we picked. Find node in BST has a recursive version which takes off H space and an iterative version which takes off one space. LCA solution 1 takes off H space and the LCA solution 2 takes off one space. So if we either call find node in BST recursive version or LCA solution 1, then the space complexity is off H.
But if we call the iterative version of find node in BST and the LCA solution too, which is the iterative version, then the space complexity in both cases will be O of 1. So the space complexity of this function will be O of 1. You can find the link to the code in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.